uh, planned for today. And uh, we will proceed through the service without any sort of prompting or, or anything else. Everyone knows the roles. They're just going to step up and, and do their thing as we proceed through. So we will get started. Okay. Mm -hmm. And our gathering hymn is number 134 in the hymn book, Shadows Gather Deep and Cold. Shadows gather deep and cold, lamplight flickers, fades and fails. Lord, you know what daybreak holds, thorns and beatings, cross and nails. You will be denied, betrayed, when the rooster wakes the sun. Yet you kneel alone and pray, not my will, but thine be done. In the watches of the night, in the hour when darkness reigns, in the grief that has no light, in the time of fear and pain, then we hold fast to your Everybody's got their cameras turned off. Um, maybe Jim Fuss would be willing to unmute and help 
lead the congregation in the response. Yeah, I can do that. Thank you, Jim. Our Lenten journey has led us to this moment. Today we come to Calvary, to the foot of the cross, to be with our Lord. This day is one of grief and pain, one of tear-stained hurting. A time to remember that Jesus died, mocked and rejected. That he died alone, abandoned by most of his friends. That he died still loving us. Thank you, Jim. And I invite everyone to join in in our uh, opening prayer. Loving God, you sent your son to live among us so that we might know the depths of your love. Through Jesus' death, you call us to new life in him. Open our hearts and minds as we worship you. Teach us of your unmerited love. Bless us as we pray the words Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And our scripture starts, our, all of our scripture is from chapter 18 of John's gospel, and we start at the beginning. After Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees. And they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. And then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, whom are you looking for? And they answered, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus replied, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Again, he asked them, whom are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of the sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. And Jesus said to Peter, put your sword back into its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? Were you there in the garden after dark? Were you there in the garden after dark? Oh, 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 oh. sometimes it causes me to Tremble, tremble. Were you there in the garden after dark? So the soldiers, their officer and the temple police arrested Jesus and bound him. First, they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Sanhedrin that it was better to have one person die 
for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest, but Peter was standing outside at the gate. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the woman who guarded the gate, and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, you are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? And he said, I am not. Now the slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold and they were standing around it and warming themselves. Peter also was standing with them and warming himself. Disciples turn their backs. Were you there when disciples turned their backs? Oh, 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 sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when disciples turned their backs? Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in the synagogues and in the temple where all the people come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus on the face, saying, Is this how you answer the high priest? And Jesus answered, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself, and they asked him, You are not also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it. And at that moment, the cock crowed. There, when the cock began to crow, were you there when the cock began to crow? Oh. Sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when the cock began to crow? Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? And they answered, If this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The temple authorities replied, we are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus and asked him, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered, do you ask this on your own or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, 
I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the temple authorities. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, so you are a king? And Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. For this I was born and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, what is truth? Were you there when they took him to be judged? Were you there when they took him to be judged? Oh, oh, oh. sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they took him to be judged? After he said this, he went out to the temple authorities again and told them, I find no case against him, but you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a bandit. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said, here is the man. Useless objects. Thorns, in the country we try to avoid them, lest clothing become entangled and torn, useless only for sheep to scratch their hides, relieving their irritation. Jesus, too, was avoided, lest he lead to entanglement, but he got entangled in our brokenness. He seemed to want to. They use this, this crown of thorns to relieve their irritation. But there the likeness stands. It made him a poignant kind of king. Christ's robe, we are told, was high of quality and design. Woven without a seam, he was to exchange it for this, a robe that has seen better days. After all, it is secondhand. Jesus deserved a better tribute, the tribute of nimble fingers, caring hands, of fingers, hands that put love into every stitch. But in some strange way, this robe was tailor-made for him, who personifies all beauty, goodness, and truth, who experienced being born, living, loving, laughing, who entered fully into our humanity with zest for life and all the simple things that make life precious, put on a, sem a second hand robe and all in him, all beauty, goodness, truth, life, love, and laughter wears not out.
Were you there when they made a crown of thorns? Were you there when they made a crown of thorns? Oh, 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 oh. sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they made a crown of thorns? When the chief priests and the temple police saw him, they shouted, crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The chief priests answered him, we have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die because he is claimed to be the son of God. Now, when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, you would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the chief priests cried out, if you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at, at a place called the stone pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. And he said to the people, here is your king. And they cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate asked them, shall I crucify your king? And the chief priests answered, we have no king but the emperor. And he handed him over to them to be crucified. Were you there when they shouted crucify? Were you there when they shouted crucify? Oh, 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 oh. sometimes it calls is me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they shouted crucify? So they took Jesus and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. That's a nice piece of wood, this. It's such a waste. It could have been carved using a house for a door or a window on the farm along the road, years it took to grow, green and beautiful on some other hill. Cut it down, it took time to season. But I suppose it took this man too time to grow, to season, to prepare. Wasted years now, I don't know. Maybe something is being built upon this cross, a signpost to abundant life, a door to newness, a window on the world, a bridge between us and God, us and us and us and others, past and future, death and life.
Nails are used to hold together, not tear apart, to construct rather than destroy. They are made to pierce wood, not human flesh. Yes, those are the people's people responsibility, and they, they look as hard as nails. I hate to have a part in it with them, and yet I have. It's hardened hearts, self-righteous anger, stubborn pride, and all the little hatreds. Those are the real nails that pin Christ to the cross. Were you there when they nailed him to a tree? Were you there when they nailed him to a tree? Oh, 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 sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they nailed him to a tree? Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the people read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priest said to Pilate, do not write the King of the Jews, but this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. A controversy surrounds this sign. Some folks will find fault with everything. Here is written a feeble ruler's stubbornness and an enraged people's perplexity. Poorer, lesser educated people might have written other things about this man, perhaps more accurate. They called him rabbi, anointed one, beloved of God. But this sign meant as ridicule becomes ironically revelatory. Crucified, my Lord. Were you there when they crucified, my Lord? Oh, 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 oh. sometimes it caused tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. They tossed the dice for the clothes of a dying man not to the needy, but to the lucky. 
not given by the graciousness of the giver, but grabbed by the luck of the draw, as if it was his luck to be crucified. And there's to tell jokes about it after in the bar. Did God throw the dice and Jesus had to die? Or did God choose to love no matter what the cost? Is it our fate to be here on this unholy Friday? Or have we chosen to travel with the crucified one, the one still crucified today? Were you there when they cast lots for his robe? Were you there when they cast lots for his robe? Oh, 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 oh. sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they cast lots for his robe? Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, woman, here is your son. And then he said to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. As she neared Skull Hill on her son's friend's arm, her first thought was a wild hope. It's not him. But drawing nearer now, she sees her child, revealed in utter degradation, obscene agony. Yet only what so many others suffered. The end seems near. His eyes are open, lips move. Struggling to form a word, leaning, Yet more heavily on John's arm, she strains to hear a word of love. Woman, your son. Friend, your mother. Were you there with his mother keeping watch? Were you there with his mother keeping watch? Oh, 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 oh. sometimes it causes me to tremble. Tremble, tremble. Were you there with his mother keeping watch? After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. Hot, feverish, delirious, pain and anguish, sore tormented body. It's unjust. It's unjust that any legal requirement should deny him human rights should prevent me from taking him down here when caring hands could nurse him. Whatever has he done, this man should be in a clean bed and left in peace, not this. 
I can't even wipe his forehead. His throat must be as dry as sawdust. If I soak a sponge in wine, now I, here, lend me your stick, that I may give him this to dull his pain while he yet lives and ease his dying. Offered him some wine. Were you there when they offered him some wine? Oh, 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 oh. sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they offered him some wine? When Jesus had received the wine, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Were you there? bowed his head and died. Were you there when he bowed his head and died? Oh, 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 oh. sometimes it causes me to tremble. Tremble, tremble. Were you there when he bowed his head and died? Since it was the day of preparation, the temple is not washly because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified so that you may believe his testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. pierced him in the side. Were you there when they pierced him in the side? Oh, 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 oh. sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they pierced him in the side? After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the temple authorities, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission so he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with spices in linen cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, 
And in the garden, there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so because it was the Jewish day of preparation and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Oh, 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 oh. sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Jesus believed in life abundant for all people. Jesus lived life abundant for all people. Do you believe in life abundant for yourself? For the world? The rock of life.